Welcome to our Mystery Sleep Stories channel, your sanctuary for meditation and a peaceful sleep. Immerse yourself in the soothing embrace of sleep-inducing tales, carefully crafted to transport you to mysterious lands. Let the gentle rain and serene sounds of nature accompany you on this quest for deep sleep. Say goodbye to restless nights and welcome the embrace of a restful sleep with our mystery bedtime stories. So, let the tale begin. The Phantom Rider Chapter 1 The Vanishing Caravan In the heart of a bustling medieval town, the evening air buzzed with the raucous laughter of patrons spilling from the many taverns lining the cobblestone streets. The warm, enticing aroma of roasted meat and spiced ale drifted through the open doors and windows, mingling with the sharp tang of wood smoke from countless hearths. Amidst this lively scene, a caravan of traders made their final preparations for a journey that would take them through the ominous, whispering woods, a place infamous for its eerie silence and numerous unexplained disappearances. The caravan, a long line of wooden wagons laden with goods, set out just as the sun dipped below the horizon, casting long shadows that seemed to chase them into the forest. The town folk watched with a mixture of apprehension and curiosity, whispering amongst themselves about the bravery, or foolishness, of the traders venturing into the haunted woods. That night, a fierce storm descended upon the town. Thunder rumbled like an angry giant, and lightning split the sky, illuminating the town and the surrounding forest in brief, blinding flashes. Rain poured down in torrents, drenching the streets and driving people into the safety of their homes and the warmth of the taverns. When dawn broke, the storm had passed, leaving the town drenched and eerily quiet. The caravan, which should have emerged from the woods by now, was nowhere to be seen. Anxiety rippled through the town as word spread of the caravan's mysterious disappearance. The whispering woods had claimed yet another group of souls. News of the vanished caravan spread quickly, especially in the town's many taverns, where the usual light-hearted chatter was replaced by hushed, fearful conversations. Among the patrons was Cassian, a seasoned mercenary known for his unmatched skill and unwavering resolve. He sat in a dimly lit corner of the rusty tankard, a tavern known for its rough clientele and strong ale. Cassian listened intently to the rumors and tales, his interest piqued by the challenge and the promise of a handsome reward. A wealthy merchant, whose son had been part of the ill-fated caravan, sought Cassian out, desperation etched into his features. Find my son, he pleaded, placing a heavy purse of gold on the table and uncover what happened to the caravan. Cassian accepted the task without hesitation. The lure of gold was strong, but it was the thrill of the unknown that truly drove him. He prepared quickly, gathering his gear and setting out towards the whispering woods, the townsfolk watching him with a mixture of hope and dread. The path into the woods was marked by a noticeable shift in atmosphere. The lively sounds of the town faded, replaced by an eerie silence that seemed to swallow all noise. The forest canopy loomed overhead, dense and oppressive, casting long, twisting shadows that moved with a life of their own. The deeper Cassian ventured, the more the forest seemed to close in around him, the trees whispering secrets in a language he could not understand. Cassian tracked the caravan's last known path with the skill of a seasoned hunter. He found broken branches, 
and disturbed undergrowth, evidence of the caravan's passage. Yet, there was no sign of the traders themselves. The forest's eerie silence deepened, creating an almost otherworldly atmosphere. It was in this foreboding terrain that Cassian encountered something truly unsettling. As he moved through a particularly dark stretch of the forest, a ghostly figure materialized from the shadows. The phantom rider, an ethereal figure on horseback, emerged, its appearance both awe-inspiring and terrifying. Clad in spectral armor that shimmered with an eerie light, the ghostly figure seemed to hover above the ground, the horse's hooves making no sound as they moved. The rider spoke, its voice resonating through the forest like a chilling breeze. Turn back, wanderer. A malevolent force haunts these woods. Seek not what is lost, for the forest guards its secrets jealously. Cassian felt a shiver run down his spine, but he was undeterred. The phantom rider's warning only deepened the mystery and heightened his resolve. Driven by a mixture of curiosity, duty, and the thrill of the hunt, he pressed on, determined to uncover the truth behind the caravan's disappearance. The encounter with the phantom rider marked a turning point in Cassian's journey. The forest seemed to grow darker and more menacing with each step, but his resolve remained unshaken. The phantom rider's words echoed in his mind, a constant reminder of the danger that lay ahead. Yet, Cassian could not turn back now. The promise of uncovering an ancient conspiracy and the fate of the lost caravan drove him deeper into the whispering woods, where secrets and shadows awaited. Chapter 2 The Tavern Tales Cassian's journey led him to the edge of the whispering woods, where the dense forest gave way to a small clearing. In the midst of this clearing stood the wandering minstrel, a rundown tavern that served as a solitary beacon of warmth and light. Its wooden structure was weather-beaten and worn, but the glow of lanterns through its windows and the sound of muted laughter from within promised respite and information. Cassian pushed open the creaking door and stepped inside, shaking the forest's chill from his cloak. The interior of the tavern was dimly lit by flickering candles and a roaring fire in the hearth. The scent of roasting meat and spiced ale filled the air, mingling with the earthy smell of damp wood and smoke. The tavern was filled with a mix of weary travelers and hardened locals, their faces etched with the hardships of life on the edge of the whispering woods. Cassian approached the bar, where the tavern keeper, an old man with a grizzled beard and a knowing look, was polishing a mug. The tavern keeper's eyes, sharp and observant, met Cassian's with a hint of curiosity. Without a word, the old man set the mug aside and poured a fresh one sliding it across the bar to Cassian. I've heard whispers of a phantom rider, Cassian began, his voice low but commanding. What can you tell me about it? As the words left his mouth, the tavern fell silent. The patrons, who had been engaged in their own conversations, turned to listen, their faces a mix of fear and intrigue. The tavern keeper leaned in, his eyes reflecting the flickering candlelight, and spoke in a hushed tone. The rider is an ancient guardian, he said, his voice carrying the weight of old legends. Once a noble knight, betrayed and bound to these woods by dark magic. He warns of a powerful artifact, hidden deep within, that corrupts all who seek it. Cassian took a long sip of his ale, considering the tavern keeper's words. Before he could ask more, 
a cloaked figure at the far end of the bar spoke up. The figure, shrouded in shadows, pulled back her hood to reveal a woman with piercing eyes and a presence that commanded attention. She was a witch, well versed in the secrets of the forest. The artifact, she said, her voice clear and resonant, is said to control the forest itself. Many have sought it, and none have returned. The witch's words hung in the air, and Cassian felt a chill run down his spine. He knew the forest was dangerous, but this new information added a layer of complexity to his quest. The Phantom Rider's warnings and the tale of the artifact hinted at a conspiracy that stretched back centuries. The witch continued, her eyes locking onto Cassian's. The artifact's power is immense, but it is also a beacon for those who seek to exploit it. If you truly wish to find the caravan, you must tread carefully. The forest guards its secrets jealously, and not all who wander its paths have noble intentions. Cassian nodded, absorbing the witch's advice. The tavern, once filled with the sounds of camaraderie, was now silent. Its patrons hanging on every word of the unfolding tale. The atmosphere was thick with anticipation and the unspoken fear of the unknown. Armed with new information, Cassian knew he had to continue his quest. The Phantom Rider's warnings were not to be taken lightly, but the promise of uncovering an ancient conspiracy was too enticing to ignore. He finished his ale and rose from his seat, the eyes of the tavern's patrons following his every move. Before he left, the tavern keeper leaned in once more. Beware, mercenary, he said, his voice grave. The forest is alive with old magic and forgotten grudges. Trust no one and keep your wits about you. Cassian gave a curt nod and turned to leave, his mind racing with the possibilities and dangers that lay ahead. As he stepped out into the night, the warm glow of the tavern faded behind him, replaced by the cold, unwelcoming embrace of the whispering woods. He was faced with a dark and menacing forest, with ancient trees concealing its mysteries. Although there was much danger ahead, Cassian's resolve remained firm. He was resolved to learn the truth about the mysterious ghost rider and the disappearing caravan. With the witch's warning echoing in his mind and the weight of the tavern keeper's words heavy on his shoulders, Cassian ventured deeper into the forest. The shadows seemed to close in around him, and the whispers of the woods grew louder, but he pressed on, driven by the promise of gold and the thrill of the unknown. Each step took him further from the safety of the town and deeper into the heart of the whispering woods, where secrets, dangers, and the phantom rider awaited. Chapter 3 the Phantom's Warning. As Cassian delved deeper into the whispering woods, the atmosphere grew more oppressive. The dense canopy overhead blocked out the sunlight, casting long, eerie shadows that danced with malevolent intent. The path became increasingly difficult to navigate, littered with the remnants of the vanished caravan discarded crates, broken wheels, and scattered belongings. Each clue brought him closer to the truth, but also deeper into the forest's treacherous embrace. The air grew colder with each step, the temperature dropping unnaturally, as if the forest itself was breathing an icy breath. Cassian's breath formed visible puffs in the air, and his senses were on high alert. The whispers that gave the forest its name grew louder, echoing through the trees in a language he couldn't understand, but could feel resonating in his bones. 
it was as if the very trees were conspiring against him, their ancient roots weaving a web of deceit and danger. Cassian paused by a particularly large oak, its gnarled branches twisting towards the sky like skeletal fingers. Among its roots, he found a fragment of cloth snagged on a thorn, a clear sign that the caravan had passed this way. He crouched to examine it, the worn fabric telling a tale of desperation and haste. He stood, determined to press on, when a sudden chill washed over him, making the hairs on the back of his neck stand on end. Emerging from the shadows like a wraith, the phantom rider appeared once more. The spectral knight's armor shimmered with an eerie light, casting a ghostly glow on the forest floor. The horse it rode was equally ethereal, its hooves making no sound as they touched the ground. You have been warned, the spectral knight intoned, its voice a haunting melody that echoed through the trees. The forest will not let you leave if you continue on this path. Cassian, undeterred by the ghostly apparition, stepped forward, his eyes fixed on the phantom rider. What is this artifact, and why does it hold such power? he demanded, his voice steady, despite the fear gnawing at the edges of his resolve. The rider's eyes, glowing with an unearthly light, seemed to pierce through Cassian's very soul. The artifact, the rider explained, is a relic from an ancient order, a silver amulet imbued with the power to control the very essence of the forest. It was meant to protect, but has since been corrupted. Those who seek it do so at their peril. Cassian absorbed the rider's words, the gravity of the situation sinking in. The artifact's power to control the forest explained the unnatural phenomena he had encountered. The whispers, the sudden chill, the feeling of being watched. Yet, it also explained the caravan's disappearance and the danger it posed to anyone who ventured into the forest. Cassian steeled himself, determined to locate the relic and get the truth about what had happened to disappear the caravan. With firmness, he said, I have to find it. To put an end to this, although the phantom rider's demeanor remained enigmatic, its voice carried a faint undertone of reverence. Excellent, it exclaimed. But mercenary, heed the warning. The forest will stop at nothing to preserve its secrets, and the route ahead is paved with danger. Remain alert and have no faith in anyone. With the phantom rider's cryptic warning echoing in his mind, Cassian continued his journey. The spectral knight faded back into the shadows, its form dissolving like mist. Cassian pressed on, the path growing darker and more twisted with each step. The whispers grew louder, more insistent, as if the forest itself was trying to dissuade him from his quest. Chapter 4 The Final Confrontation Cassian's journey through the Whispering Woods had been arduous and fraught with peril, leading him finally to a hidden clearing. In the midst of this clearing lay the ruins of an ancient temple buried beneath the forest floor and overgrown with vines, shrouded in a thick, swirling mist. The temple, ancient and forgotten, was the heart of the forest's dark magic. Its crumbling stone walls were covered in moss, and twisted roots snaked through the ruins like veins of corruption. As Cassian stepped into the clearing, the sight before him confirmed his worst fears. The remnants of the caravan were scattered around the temple's entrance. The bodies of the traders lay twisted and lifeless, their faces frozen in expressions of terror. They had fallen victim to the malevolent force that ruled the forest. Their souls claimed by the darkness 
that had ensnared this ancient place. At the temple's entrance stood the rogue sorcerer, a figure cloaked in darkness and corruption. The sorcerer's eyes glowed with an unnatural light, and his presence exuded a palpable aura of evil. You seek the artifact, the sorcerer hissed, his voice dripping with malevolence. It belongs to me now. Cassian's heart pounded as he faced the sorcerer, realizing that the final battle was upon him. The forest seemed to come alive, roots and branches lashing out to protect their dark master. The trees groaned and creaked, their limbs thrashing like serpents. The ground itself seemed to pulse with dark energy, making each step a struggle. It was a dangerous and bloody war. With his sword drawn and shining in the twilight, Cassian lunged at the magician. With a wave of his palm, the sorcerer returned the favor, unleashing a burst of dark magic that just missed Cassian and left a flaming crater in its wake. Cassian lunged with his sword, but the sorcerer created a dark energy shield to block the strike. Roots and branches lashed out at Cassian, their movements quick and deadly. He dodged and parried, using every ounce of his skill and strength to fend off the attacks. The forest was a living, breathing entity, fighting to protect the source of its corruption. Cassian's strength and determination were pushed to their limits as he battled both the sorcerer and the forest itself. In the midst of the chaos, the phantom rider appeared, emerging from the shadows like a beacon of hope. The rider's spectral armor shone with an eerie light, and his presence seemed to weaken the sorcerer's hold over the forest. Strike now, Cassian, the phantom rider urged, his voice a powerful echo that cut through the din of battle. With renewed resolve, Cassian pressed forward. The sorcerer's dark magic swirled around him, but the phantom rider's guidance bolstered his spirit. Cassian's sword clashed against the sorcerer's defenses, each blow chipping away at the shield of darkness. The sorcerer's eyes burned with fury as he unleashed another blast of dark energy, but Cassian was ready. He dodged the attack and surged forward, his sword slicing through the sorcerer's defenses. With a final, desperate swing, Cassian struck the sorcerer, the blade cutting through the dark energy and striking the amulet that hung around the sorcerer's neck. The amulet, a silver artifact glowing with an eerie light, shattered with a brilliant flash. The sorcerer screamed, as the dark magic erupted from the broken amulet, engulfing him in a torrent of destructive energy. The force of the explosion threw Cassian back, and he landed hard on the forest floor. The ground shook as the dark magic dissipated, and the forest seemed to breathe a collective sigh of relief. The roots and branches that had attacked him fell limp, their malevolent force gone. As the dust settled, the phantom rider approached Cassian. The spectral knight's eyes shone with gratitude as he offered Cassian a final, respectful nod. You have freed us, the rider said, his voice filled with relief and gratitude. The forest and I are no longer bound by the sorcerer's dark magic. With those words, the phantom rider began to fade his form dissolving into the ether. The forest, now free from the sorcerer's influence, began to heal. The mist lifted, and the oppressive darkness that had hung over the clearing dissipated like morning fog. The air grew warmer, and the sounds of nature slowly returned. Cassian stood and surveyed the scene, his body aching from the battle but his spirit triumphant. He had uncovered the truth behind the vanished caravan and ended the forest's malevolent force.
he gathered the fallen traders' belongings, determined to bring closure to their families. Returning to the town, Cassian was greeted as a hero. He not only received the promised riches, but also the gratitude of the townspeople, who had feared the Whispering Woods for so long. The tale of the Phantom Rider and the Vanished Caravan became legend, a story told in taverns to both warn and inspire those who dared to brave the ancient woods. In the end, Cassian's journey was more than a quest for gold. It was a testament to the enduring spirit of those who seek the truth, no matter where it may lead. And in the bustling taverns of the medieval town, his name became synonymous with courage, determination, and the relentless pursuit of justice. <laughs>